In this video, we'll take a look at what makes KDB architecture unique and why it's crucial for handling vast amounts of real-time data across many industries. Now, in this digital age, data is flooding organizations at an unprecedented rate, from financial transactions to social media interactions, and this presents a significant challenge, how to process and analyze this data in real time. Consider the financial market, where even a few milliseconds of delay can lead to missed opportunities or financial losses. And KDB is the solution to meet these demanding needs for real-time data process. It's widely used in banks, hedge funds, and other financial institutions, as well as in manufacturing, aerospace, and telecommunication sectors. And the typical architecture rarely deviates from a particular layout of queue processes. This is commonly known as tick architecture, and this is what we're gonna learn how to build in this course. Now, before we go any further, let's clarify two key terms which are often used interchangeably, KDB and Q. Well, Q is the specialized programming language designed for handling time series data within the KDB ecosystem. And KDB combines this power of Q with a high performance database engine optimized for speed and scalability. And each instance of the Q language interpreter is referred to as a Q process. And real life KDB systems are made up of lots of these Q processes, all tasked with different things and all talking to each other. Hopefully that's clarified some of the terminology. Now let's take a look at a basic or otherwise known as vanilla KDB architecture. First, we have some external processes and these include the upstream data feed. For example, this could be exchange market data in a financial application or sensor readings in a manufacturing application. And these are often in proprietary format. A feed handler then converts the data stream into a format suitable for writing to KDB. Next, we have the processes internal to the data capture KDB system. This starts off with the ticker plant, which is usually the first port of entry to our KDB architecture, and it's considered the most important component. And this process receives data via the feed handler and it's responsible for publishing this data out to any processes which are subscribed to it. Now, why do we need this? Couldn't we just send our data directly to those downstream processes? Well, we could, but the ticker plant also logs all incoming records maintaining a backup in case any processes go down or we have a failure of our system. Next, we have all the processes that are subscribed to the ticker plant. And the first of these is a real-time database known as the RDB. And it simply keeps a record of all today's data stored in tables. And then in a basic setup at the end of each working day, the RDB will save today's data down to disk and clear out its memory, ready to capture data for the next day. This historical data that has been stored on disk can then be mapped into memory via a historical database process as and when it's needed. So why do we need a separate process for historical data? Well, say a user runs a query over a large amount of historical data. Having this query run in a separate process means the memory and performance of the RDB, which only has intraday data, is unaffected. We also have a second process subscribed to the ticker plant in this example. And this is a real-time subscriber, which is also sometimes called a complex event processor. Now this process typically performs more complex logic, for example, saving aggregated views of the data and running calculations on the incoming data, making use of streaming analytics. And the reason we do this in a separate process and not just in the ORDB is because the RDB is already busy enough capturing that normalized upstream data, which is typically of a very high velocity and volume, and it's busy servicing this to downstream users and processes. And the final process in our basic setup, which isn't actually part of the data capture process, but is still super important, is the gateway. And this abstracts end users away from the data capture process. And this provides a layer of protection for the queue processes that are really crucial for data capture. It also serves as a central connection point for users, so they don't need to remember which data is where and can handle things like permissions. So this video has laid the foundation for understanding the basic KDB architecture. In the next video, we'll delve into the practical implementation and explore how to set this up and run the architecture effectively.